Now we take a look at the Mosquito Hot End. The Mosquito is a well-crafted 3D printing hot end made right here in the United States. It was created by a Florida-based company, Slice Engineering. I have been running a lot of plastic through my Mosquito, and I have come up with some results. While testing, there are a few things that really stuck out about the Mosquito's design. The first thing that became very apparent is the Mosquito is designed to be a one-stop shop. When you buy a Mosquito hot end, other than swapping out a few nozzles here and there, that's pretty much all there is to it. There's nothing to service, there's nothing to replace, and for all intents and purposes, wear and tear is non-existent. Now there are two different flavors of the Mosquito, the standard version and the Magnum version for high throughput 3D printing. Now let's take a closer look at both of them. This is the standard version of the Mosquito, and please excuse the mess on this hot end. This has nothing to do with slice engineering and all about the practices that I use when I 3D print. Now whether you get the standard hot end or the Magnum hot end, they all come with the tools you need for every screw on the hot end, a 25 millimeter fan, and some connectors to splice it in. It's important to note that you get screws to mount the fan, you get screws for a mount on the top, and screws to mount on the bottom if you're using a Delta style. The Mosquito doesn't come with a heater, a thermistor, or a nozzle, but they are all available for purchase from Slice Engineering. Outside of the solid construction of the Mosquito, there's a couple real advantages to using this design. One being this heat sink. When you have your fan mounted on the heat sink, it's almost always cool to the touch. There's no heat creep. So you can use pretty much anything you want to mount it. I created this groove mount that would fit in pretty much any V6 slot out of PLA, and I've had no issues whatsoever. I used the screws that Slice Engineering gave me just to mount it to the top. And staying with the topic of heat creep, the other big advantage is this really tight tolerance feed tube that they use for the filament. It goes from solid filament to liquid filament almost instantaneously. You don't have that break zone where it goes into its transition phase. Given the certain model and the certain temperature, this can really reduce your retraction time. The heat block on the Mosquitoes are copper alloy. That really gives it an advantage over the standard aluminum heat block. You're not going to strip this one out with a nozzle. And when loading your heater cartridge and your thermistor cartridge, they can come in from either side. So you can get really creative on how you mount these. The whole assembly is treated as one unit. There's nothing that's removable. So you don't have to be so careful when you're swapping out nozzles or changing them out altogether. They're not going to move anywhere on you. It's really easy to mount them. The Mosquito also makes it easy to install two hot ends on the same printer because they're flat on the back. You can just install them back to back with two fans, one pushing and one pulling. And now the Magnum version of the Mosquito. It's comparable to something like an E3D Volcano. The biggest difference is the copper heat break that runs down the center of the hot end. It's much larger, it's much longer, it's going to retain heat a lot better. You can see at the bottom, it's a lot thicker. And it has this heat resistant fiber sleeve that goes around the bottom to help it retain that heat even more. Again, you'll have all the same mounting options and screws as the standard hot end as you would with the Magnum hot end. Now that we know the hot end a little better, how do you test a hot end? Well, I really don't know. But here's my first thought. Given the design of the Mosquito and the transition area, you should be able to use less retraction when printing. Of course, that depends on the model and the situation, but less retraction should lead to shorter print times. But less retraction compared to what? The hot end I have the most experience with is the E3D V6, and it has kind of become the gold standard for 3D printing hot ends. So naturally, my first thought, how does the Mosquito compare to the V6? So the standard V6 is pretty much three pieces. You have the standard heat sink, you have the barrel, and the heat block. All these pieces outside of the barrel are aluminum, which makes it a pretty soft material. Where the Mosquito is all one piece. Nothing disconnects. So now I have something that I'm familiar with that I can compare the Mosquito to. But my next thought is, every 3D printer is going to be different. So I take two Prusa MK2 3D printers, and I leave the stock V6 in one, and I design some parts to mount the Mosquito in the other. Now when I design the parts for the Mosquito, I try to keep stock conditions as close as possible. So hot in and part cooling fan locations are the same, as well as hot in mounting locations. Hence the reason why I created the V6 groove mount for the Mosquito. 
So now both hot ends are loaded in the printers and I went to printing. Before we start this, I can't even tell you how many benchies I printed while testing these hot ends. It was a lot, even for me. But just to show you what it looks like, this is zero retraction. This is the Mosquito hot end, and this is the V6. So one of the biggest things I wanted to know about this was the differences in retraction in between the two hot ends. So I started at zero, and I started printing up the scale. I went all the way to 1.4 millimeters of retraction. Of course, I didn't need to go that high, the stringing stopped way before then, but I thought it was a good test and something to compare side by side. This is where I decided the butter zone was for both hot ends. This is 0.3 millimeters of retraction at 35 millimeters a second. So on the Mosquito, there are zero strings. Retraction was set perfect. And on the V6, there are very, very few fine hairs in the wheelhouse. So the Mosquito did edge it out, but not by much. And just to show you, this is the wheelhouse inside the Mosquito Benchy, and this is the wheelhouse inside the V6 Benchy. You can just barely see one little string. So while testing the hot ends, I wanted to keep things as consistent as possible. I used identical spools of filament, all the same slicer settings, and the G-code was just copied to both printers. It was the exact same file. I decided to keep the 0.3 millimeter retraction distance and do a couple of other models just to see how they turn out in comparison. Now there is a document in the description below that shows more in-depth test results if you'd like to check that out, but let's check out some of the other models I tried. On my best day, this is a hard model to print, but I thought it'd be a great test for the retraction rate on both hot ends. Now this is the Mosquito model. If you look through the center, you can see some very, very fine stringing, but all of the small holes that it had to reproduce came out amazingly well for the given task. And this is the same model, same G-code from the V6. You can see the stringing through the center is just a little bit worse than the Mosquito, and a lot of the holes probably aren't quite as neat. But again, just slightly better on the Mosquito hot end. Still both very awesome prints. So we're not all going for this crazy torture test here. What does it look like on just your average model? So enter these bender heads and you would have a really hard time telling them apart. They are exactly the same, down to every layer line. Even the inconsistencies in the overhangs are the same. There is no way that you can say one of these is better than the other. Just for fun, I threw this crazy lattice cube test at the Mosquito, handled it no problems, almost zero stringing, and the Maker's Muse Easter Egg. Again, a very awesome print. The mosquitoes handled all those fine points, no problem at all. All testing aside, while printing under 300C like most of us do, you're not going to see that big of an increase in print quality or printing speed if you go with the mosquito. Because of its makeup and design, the mosquito is able to achieve these crazy print temperatures over 450C with minimal heat creep. And while that's impressive to think about, it's not something the average hobbyist like you and me are ever going to be able to test. Now Slice Engineering does offer a couple of other helpful products. They carry these high-end 50 watt heater cartridges in 12 and 24 volt. You're not just going to find these everywhere. They also carry and recommend using boron paste when assembling your hot end. It works as both a thermal conductor and an anisease. They will also soon be carrying these 450C thermistors. This is pretty much the highest temp thermistor that you can find anywhere. Extremely high quality. And you don't just have to use those parts on your Mosquito hot end. They'll work with pretty much any 3D printer, and it's a great upgrade. Now let's get down to it. What about price? Well, the standard Mosquito is going to run $150 US, while the Magnum version runs $175 US. With the V6 right at $60, and with the Volcano kit, it's $100, that might sound a little steep. Although I have had to swap out a few heat blocks and barrels on my V6s, you can buy a lot of barrels and heat blocks for the price difference. Although, hassle-free parts on your 3D printer is worth a lot. And that brings me to my favorite part about the Mosquito Hot End. One hand behind your back. Are you the type of person that likes to try different sized nozzles? Well then the Mosquito Hot End is for you. Because hot or cold, you can switch it out with just one hand. And done.
And if you've ever had to swap out a nozzle while you're holding the heat block with a set of pliers, trying to avoid the thermistor and the heater wires, backing out the nozzle while everything is extremely hot, then you'll know exactly how much that feature can be worth. Now, should you run right out and get yourself a Mosquito hot end? Well, the price is kind of high. But if you want a hot end that's extremely well designed, that's pretty versatile, and almost completely hassle-free, then the Mosquito's for you. It's going to be the top tier hot end and a lot of different 3D printer configurations. Now I have been in contact with both Dan and Chris from Slice Engineering on this hot end. They've both been extremely helpful and I wish them the best on this endeavor. Please head over to SliceEngineering.com and check out all the products they have for sale. All opinions expressed on all these products are my own, and both hot ends were bought with my own funds. If you like this video or you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching.